proof of a world government conspiracy is uncovered on our Seeing is Believing tour of five U.S. cities, starting with Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado is home to America's largest airport called the Denver New World Airport. The airport was built by Freemasons in 1995 and features a Freemasonic dedication capstone in the atrium. A time capsule is buried underneath the stone to be opened in the year 2094. The New World Denver Airport has a swastika-shaped runway. There is reportedly a deep underground military base beneath the airport with miles and miles of secret subterranean tunnels connected to a large network of underground cities. As passengers drive up to the main airport terminal, they are greeted by a sinister looking 32 foot high fiberglass blue stallion with veins popping out of its body and demonic eyes that glow bright red. Not exactly a calming influence for travelers who are already spooked about getting on a plane. The sculpture is believed to symbolize the pale horse of the apocalypse mentioned in the Bible, whose name is Death. The sculptor, Luis Jimenez, was killed by the horse when a chunk of the sculpture broke loose and came crashing down on him. Locals call the horse, Blucifer. Inside the airport, travelers hurry past grotesque gargoyles in suitcases that leer down at them and morbid apocalyptic murals that line the airport walls at the main gate. Four panels of giant-sized wall murals in the baggage claim area tell a terrifying and prophetic story in pictures of how humanity's future is going to unfold. The first mural reveals a horrific Darth Vader-like figure wearing a Nazi general uniform and a gas mask. The gas mask indicates that the next war will use depopulating biological or chemical agents. The white dove that he is killing symbolizes peace. On the right are destroyed buildings reminiscent of the Twin Towers. The Nazi general scimitar's sword has been swished through the air leaving behind a rainbow chemtrail that poisons the air and ethnic population below it. On the left is an endless line of weeping women refugees holding dead babies. There is no trace whatsoever of violence to the dead children who appear to have died from the deadly gas of the toxic rainbow. Why are there no men present? Presumably, they have all been killed. The Nazi general scimitar's sword that destroys peace is a symbol used by the Shriners who are Freemasons. Freemasonry is a fraternity within a fraternity. Outwardly, it is a friendly charitable organization that conceals an inner brotherhood of the 33rd degree elect. The next airport mural shows a forest and a city in flames. The world's endangered animals and plants are extinct. Buffaloes, whales, leopards, elephants, and sea turtles. The sickly haze and leaping flames suggest a nuclear or biochemical devastation. Children are the only survivors, and they are weeping over three open caskets of an African girl on the left, a native girl in the center, and a white Judeo-Christian girl on the right. They represent the death of the old black, red, and white root races to make way for the new world race. The dead white girl in the coffin holds a Bible and a yellow Juden star, which was used by the Nazis to identify Jews. It symbolizes the death of Judeo-Christian beliefs. Another child holds a Mayan tablet depicting the end of the Mayan calendar and the end of the world as we know it. In the third mural, the apocalyptic war has ended. Children of all nations are joyfully giving up their nation's sovereignty to the blonde-haired, blue-eyed German boy at the center. They are all turning over their weapons wrapped in their country's national flag to the German boy. The Bavarian jacket leaves no doubt whatsoever that the blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy is German. He symbolizes the Bavarian Illuminati. 
With an iron fist, the German boy destroys the weapons of war symbolized by the Nazi general's sword. The German boy uses a hammer, which symbolizes the hammer and sickle of communism. In the foreground, the Nazi general is dead, with doves of peace perched on his corpse. The German boy symbolizes a world leader and savior who brings peace through communism to a devastated world. Who is this boy that the world gives up their flags and weapons to? We know he is German with blonde hair and blue eyes like Prince William, who posed as a boy for this Papua New Guinea stamp. Prince William's father is the son of Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth whose surnames were changed to cover up their German identities. Prince William's mother, Diana, was allegedly the daughter of James Goldsmith, a German Jew. In the fourth mural, the earth is restored, including the endangered species, the land and water. This future world is populated not by adults, but by parentless children. What happened to the adults? The children are in a dance line that is led by the Scottish boy who symbolizes Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Also on the far left is an African woman carrying a snake banner. The parentless children of the world are celebrating the New World religion as they gather around and touch the light of Lucifer who appears as a genetically engineered plant. The plant is a floral version of the colorful bird known as the Quetzalcoatl or feathered serpent. It is symbolically inseparable from the morning star and Lucifer. The main theme of the Denver New World Airport murals is an apocalypse with massive depopulation, extinction of species, the death of Judeo-Christian beliefs and the birth of one world government, one world ruler and one world religion. The next stop on our Seeing is Believing tour is Charlotte, North Carolina, where the headquarters of America's largest bank is located, the Bank of America. Here we find more eerie, bone-chilling paintings describing the apocalyptic story of humanity's future in pictures. Three prophetic frescoes are prominently displayed in the Bank of America's main lobby. Like the Denver murals, they tell a symbolic story which is understood by those in the know. In the first mural, the central figure is a blue-eyed, blonde-haired German boy wearing a Nazi overcoat, clicking his heels together and standing at attention on the checkerboard floor that is a classic symbol of Freemasonry. Who is he? He is the same boy found in the Denver Airport mural, but he is older in this continuation mural. Notice the phallic hand gesture in the comparison photo of the young, blonde-haired, blue-eyed Prince William. Similarly, the boy in the mural has a subliminal erect phallus on his Nazi overcoat symbolizing power. By erasing the boy's right arm, it becomes clear that the flames of the burning bush are shaped like a hand and the bush itself is shaped like an arm that is positioned at the boy's shoulder. It now becomes obvious that the German boy is making a straight arm Nazi salute. Prince William's Knight of the Garter crest is a gold lion. The image of the gold lion is subliminally embedded into the blonde hair of the German boy in the mural. Notice the Egyptian pyramid and black sun behind him. The second fresco in the Bank of America's lobby is an apocalyptic concentration camp where resistors are incarcerated. In the background, industrial burning suggests a crematorium. The back and side wall are strung with barbed wire. Hazmat marines carrying rifles are seen in the crowd with their Nazi gold eagle and flags. Notice the person wearing the white hazard protection gear. The hazard protection gear symbolizes a pandemic, biochemical or nuclear warfare. 
This is the same apocalyptic theme found in the Denver mural, in which the Nazi general is wearing a gas mask. Overhead, the elite are hovering and celebrating like gods, circling free and naked in their wealth and power. They are energized by the chaos below, where the world population is trapped in their net. All races and creeds are caught in the net of riots and protests, including a Catholic bishop, a nun and a handcuffed man. The protest signs are blank, implying they have no voice. The street signs are also blank, implying there is nowhere to go. The last fresco has a mission accomplished theme. It illustrates the post-apocalyptic rebuilding era that creates order out of chaos. The red dragon in human form is etched into the hillside at the top of the fresco. He sleeps peacefully while the miners serve him. These miners are a reminder of the internationally televised Chilean mine disaster and rescue in 2010. 33 miners were rescued in a ceremonial raising of the Phoenix. The ritual was an announcement to 33rd degree Masons that Lucifer is rising. The date of the rescue ritual was October 13, 2010, which is 13 10 10. 13 10 10 adds up to 33. Where did the Chilean president travel to the day after the rescue ritual? Buckingham Palace. He personally delivered a mine rock to the Queen that had been raised from the mine as a symbol of the risen phoenix. This president has met the Queen at London's Buckingham Palace. I've got a gift for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a piece of rock mm -hmm. that was brought by a miner. Sebastian Pinera presented the monarch with a souvenir from the San Jose mine where 33 of his countrymen were trapped for 69 days. Mr. Pinera, who was given 33 bottles of real ale by David Cameron, said the rock was brought up by the second miner to be rescued. The prophetic murals that are featured at America's largest airport and America's largest bank express a New World Order agenda that is hidden in plain sight. The giant images on display for all to see are designed to be understood only by a few. The commission murals share common themes, an apocalypse, a new world order, and a central figure who is a blonde-haired, blue-eyed German boy. The next stop on our Seeing is Believing tour is Ellerton, Georgia. Next, we turn to the town of Elberton, Georgia, the granite capital of the world. Elberton is famous for its production of tombstones, exporting some 250,000 tombstones every year. Oddly enough, the town that makes a living through death is also the home of what some consider the most threatening monument in America. A monument that some believe is a symbol for the coming Holocaust, promoting a depopulation effort at a massive scale. It was back in 1979 when a stranger came to Elberton, Georgia. Now, Elberton, Georgia is on the eastern part of Georgia, very close to the South Carolina border. And uh, this stranger said that uh, he was part of a secret group, and they wanted to build a great granite monument. This was done by a guy, you uh, have a pseudonym, came in, paid cash, had this company set these things up in 1980 called himself R.C. Christian, uh, but that's not his real name. It says right on the stones, a pseudonym. Nobody knows his real name because that isn't his real name. Nobody knows uh, who put the money up other than this fictional individual. Nobody knows what secret group he represents. Of course, Elberton uh, mines granite. They make tombstones there, uh, and they have the facilities to mine the granite. But he gave very, very specific directions as to how this was to be built so that it would always be aligned in certain ways so you'd always be able to see the North Star so it would be aligned with the moon and with the various phases of the sun. And uh, very, very similar to the Stonehenge that they have in England, uh, so is the Stonehenge was the Druidic monument. This was to be the American Stonehenge, or it's known as the Georgia Guidestones. And uh, on each one of the Guidestones is this message in a different language, actually eight different languages. 
uh, are the Ten Commandments that come from the dark side. And the first one is maintain 